our last talk is uh, Rashmi. So I guess she's getting ready. Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, Salim. Hi, Rashmi. So Rashmi is going to talk about a locality-based approach for resilient computation. Cool. Thank you. So I'll just uh, share my slides right now. Can you all see my slides? OK, awesome. Uh, hi, everyone. First of all, uh, thanks a lot to all the organizers for the invitation. I'm delighted to be part of this session. So today, I'm going to uh, talk about a new way of looking at coded computation via the lens of uh, locality of codes. This is a joint work. Just a moment. So the Zoom slide clicker isn't going that well. So let me see. Uh, okay, so this is a joint work with my PhD student, uh, Michael Rudo and my colleague, uh, Bankat Guruswami. So last in distributed computation uh, today is ubiquitous with several frameworks supporting it and also a variety of workloads making use of such frameworks. It's also well known that uh, stragglers and failures are the norm in these uh, distributed computation setups and they affect fail latency, which is a critical metric in these systems. The redundancy, uh, that is adding redundancy to computation is one approach for adding resilience. Uh, and as we have been seeing in the previous talks in the session, uh, however, adding such redundancy comes with a cost, both in terms of resources and energy, and hence one needs to add redundancy in a resource efficient manner. And it is in this context that uh, coded computation comes into the picture, uh, which is basically uh, the domain that is looking at using coding theory tools to add redundancy to computation in a resource efficient way. There have been several works on coded computation and looking at uh, several different frameworks. Uh, in my talk today, I'll be basically referring to computing an, on encoded data as uh, coded computation. This form of coded computation have been used in computing systems uh, since several decades, uh, initially to protect against errors in memory and during computation that happens within a single machine. More recently, Lee et al. introduced this concept of coded computation in the distributed computation setup to provide resilience against unavailability such as stragglers and failures, uh, where they focused on matrix vector multiplication in a distributed setup. Since then, there has been a large body of work looking at coded computation in this distributed frameworks. In my talk today, the setting that I'll be looking at is computing functions uh, for multiple inputs. So let's say uh, we want to compute F on k inputs x1 to xk. There are multiple workers uh, in a distributed setting, uh, let's say w number of workers, and each worker evaluates this function f on the input point provided to it. And there is a central coordinator communicating with all the workers. So the setting pictorially would look like this, where the encode, there is an encoder which takes the input points x1 to xk on which we want to compute this function f. And xi tildes are the outputs of this encoder which are provided as inputs to worker i, so each worker gets an input. And then these, each of the workers compute f on the input points provided to them. And the decoder takes these outputs and decodes the desired output, which is f of x1 to f of x key. Now out of these w workers, any s of them can straggle, right? So the decoder, uh, has to make do with only uh, W minus S of the outputs from, from these workers and decode the desired output. So in this setup, uh, one of the key metrics is the minimum number of workers that are needed to perform the computation in this resilient fashion, since that corresponds to the main resource overhead. Okay, so now let's look at 
when this function f is a linear function. So when f is linear, any linear erasure code that tolerates s arbitrary erasures is sufficient to guarantee the performance or meet the requirement that we just specified. This is because by linearity, function f and the encoding and decoding operations commute. And hence, we can just use any linear code and everything holds true. So the number of required workers when f is linear in order to tolerate s stragglers is just k plus s. And this can be achieved via any maximum distance separable code. However, handling nonlinear functions is highly challenging because the commutativity property that we just made use of for the linear functions just breaks. Okay. So for handling nonlinear functions, there are two broad categories of approaches. One of them is what I'll call algebraic approaches. And currently existing algebraic approaches, uh, the most general class of functions that they are applicable for is multivariate polynomials. And this is what uh, my talk is going to be about today. So I'll come back to this approach uh, while briefly mentioning the other class of approaches. So the other class of approaches is uh, what I'll call learning-based approaches, where one uses machine learning and specifically neural networks to learn coded computation schemes. And these approaches are applicable for general nonlinear functions. For example, it could be a neural network end-to-end, -end, which will be the function f if we are looking at machine learning inference systems. And surprisingly, even for such nonlinear functions, uh, learning-based approaches can tolerate s stragglers with just k plus s number of workers, as it was the case for linear functions. Uh, however, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the decoded outputs in these learning-based approaches are only approximate. So I'll not be uh, going into details uh, of learning-based approaches, but the details are present uh, in the references shown. So coming back to algebraic approaches, which is going to be the focus of today's talk, algebraic approaches uh, currently are applicable for uh, general classes up to multivariate polynomials. And they're all based on uh, interpolation property of polynomials, okay? So now uh, for a polynomial of degree D, the re minimum required number of workers in order to do the computation in a straggler resistant fashion is uh, as shown here, uh, this was due to U et al, which is a min of two entities. So I'll give you all a moment to stare at this. So recall that K is the number of input points, D is the degree of the polynomial, S is the maximum number of stragglers. So now note that whenever D is uh, greater than or equal to S plus one, that is when the degree of the polynomial is uh, uh, large, uh, one needs a multiplicative factor S overhead. So basically the second term uh, becomes the dominant uh, term. That will be the winning term. So for example, for tolerating one or two stragglers, even for degree two polynomials, one needs 100% or in the case of two stragglers two, 100% more overhead. This is a significantly high overhead and might even be prohibitive in many scenarios. Rashmi, I have a quick question. So here, yes, the polynomial is the polynomial you're using for the coding, meaning the, the evaluation of this polynomial, or the function is a polynomial function you're trying to evaluate? The function is the polynomial. Okay. So the algebraic approaches, uh, uh, currently the existing algebraic approaches are applicable uh, only to uh, polynomials in the sense that the most general yeah. class of nonlinear functions that they are applicable for is polynomials. And can you comment more on this minimum number of workers? So uh, what, what, are, what do these two quantities represent? Yes, so the, so uh, very nice question. So the second quantity, if you stare at it a little bit is basically replication. So in order to uh. tolerate S stragglers, so in, in this case, k times s plus one is basically, in addition to the k input points, uh, k workers that you would have used, you're adding k times s more, right? So that's just plain replication. And the, and the first term 
is the more the non-trivial term. And in fact, we will get to this later in the talk because the locality-based approach that I am going to present uh, gives an, you know, uh, an intuitive way of looking at this and where this term comes from. So here, do you assume that you don't, you don't uh, take into account the amount of computation you give to the worker because in replication could be, you're not splitting the task, right? Or, or in both cases, you're giving the no, same. So yes, yes. so in, even in the replication, it is splitting in the sense that the, the setup is that it is distributed in the sense that each worker computes F on one of the input points. Okay. So, so in the replication scenario, you have X1 to XK given to K workers. And then similarly, you know, so you have K times S plus one workers and each one of them are given just one input point. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, so now, uh, so this amount of overhead uh, might even be prohibitive in, in many scenarios. So the key question here is, is this high resource overhead inevitable for nonlinear functions? Yeah. So in chasing this question uh, towards this, we propose a new approach to model coded computation via the lens of locality of codes. Uh, a quick slide on setting and notation here. So for simplicity, I'll be focusing on coded computation for functions over finite vector spaces and let capital F denote a class of functions between finite vector spaces V and U and let V, which is the domain of the function consists of points V1 to Vn and let the small f be the function that we are interested in, which comes from this class of functions. So there are three key ingredients to this locality-based approach, uh, and I'll present one by one. The first ingredient is looking at functions as code words. So what do I mean by that? So recall that this function f is what we are interested in, and this has a domain v, which consists of points v1 to vn. So evaluation of this function f on all the points in the domain is basically this uh, set of n values, right? So f of v1 to f of vn. Now this is an n length vector. View this as a code word, okay? So, so we call this code word associated to a function f as it's associated a code word, cf. Now an associated code, now for the function class, is a set of code words for all functions in this class. Let's take an example. So let's take this function class as multivariate polynomials of total degree at most d. Now for a function in this class, its associated code word is going to be evaluation of that function, which will be a polynomial. So evaluation of that polynomial at all points in the domain. Right? And the associated code is going to be the collection of all such code words, which is basically a collection of code words for all multivariate polynomials of total degree at most d. So Rashmi, and, here yes? you, have a, you have a kind of limit on the number of variables, right? So. Uh, so, sorry, what variables? Uh, uh, I mean, this looks to me like a Reed Miller code, but. Uh... Yeah, exactly, yes, this is oh, a Reed Miller okay. code. <laughs> yeah, it's a good comment. So, this okay. is nothing but the Reed Miller code, right? So, basically, the associated code for this cla function class of multivariate polynomials of total degree D is the Reed Miller code. Okay, so, so this is what the associated code word and the associated code corresponds to. So now the second ingredient is uh, what we will call as computational locality of function classes. So now for a function class F, so we will call it as having computational locality L if every set of K code symbols in any code word in the associated code can be decoded from a subset of other code symbols of size L. Okay, that is there exists a subset of other code symbols of size L where any L minus S symbols are sufficient to decode. So basically this S is 
what is going to provide the Stagler resistance. So pictorially to look at this, so let's consider this associated code word for this function f in this function class. So this is a vector of length n, uh, f of v1 to f of vn. Right? So let's, let's say the k code symbols that we are looking at currently is this, f of vi1 to f of vik. So now if this function class has computational locality L, then there exists L code symbols such that any L minus S subset of those symbols are sufficient to decode these original K symbols. Okay, so now how does this notion of computational locality relates to coded computation? So suppose the input points were vi1 to vik. That is, the Just goal is to compute f of vi1 to f of vik. Yes. Uh, are you looking for the largest L or the smallest L uh, you know, in the subset size? So the smallest, smallest such L that holds for all the associated code words in the code, okay. in the sense that uh, if we look at the class of, let's say, multivariate polynomials, then it should hold for all polynomials. Yeah, so, so we were looking at this connection of between computational locality and coded computation. So suppose the input points were vi1 to vik. That is, we're interested in computing f of vi1 to f of vik. So then what one should do is get L workers to compute f on inputs vj1 to vjk. Right, so these this other set of code symbols that we saw, and as we saw, L, any L minus S of, of it is going to be sufficient to decode this uh, original K. So that is going to provide the S straggler resistance, and this decoding is going to happen via generalized local recovery algorithms of the associated code. So these local recovery algorithms are basically algorithms to recover uh, a subset or a small set of erased code symbols using a small set of other uh, code symbols. And I'm referring to uh, a generalized version of these algorithms. Uh, and this is a straightforward generalization, which I will uh, get to soon. So this is not it. Uh, so there is one missing link. So coded computation schemes also allow replication. And as we saw uh, in one of the slides earlier that replication is a valid way of adding redundancy, right? That is giving the same input to multiple coworkers, the multiple workers. But so far, the way we have defined associated code word prohibits replication. So the third ingredient is just to add repetitions within the associated code word. So now the repeated code word is going to look like this. So previously we had f of v1 to f of vn as the code word associated to a function f. Now you would have s plus one times repetitions of that vector. So now this is going to be the repeated version of the code word. I recall that this s parameter refers to the desired straggler tolerance. So uh, okay. Rashmi, this is Arya. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, the functions that you want to compute in this distributed manner, mm -hmm. uh, think of them uh, as functions over some finite field, or should I think of them as some real function like in real machine learning? Types? Yeah, so that's a good question. So what I'm presenting today uh, in the talk, so for simplicity, I'm keeping it uh, from finite vector spaces, uh, but most of these hold for infinite spaces as well. Uh, so in, in the sense that the more details are present in the archive paper, but today I will be not in the talk. I'll not be going into that. I see. Okay. Thanks. Okay, cool. So basically now, so recall that the third ingredient was to add repetitions to this, uh, associated code word, and we will carry this repetitions into the associated code now, which would just be considering all such repeated. Uh, associated code words for all the functions in that function class. And now the definition of computational locality remains the same with a slight modification that instead of looking at the associated code, now we will be looking at this repeated version. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind is that 
uh, this does not mean that you would necessarily add repetitions into the coded computation scheme. So this is just the abstraction. Uh, this just so that the model allows for repetitions uh, to be provided. Okay, so now the key result is the following, and this is the connection between this computational locality and coded computation stated informally here is that the minimum number of workers needed to perform a uh, straggler resistant computation for a function is equal to the computational locality of the function class. Okay, so now, uh, what is the utility of this locality-based model? First of all, uh, this locality-based, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, we keep no, it. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, but I think so, it, makes yeah, it, it makes it more interactive. Uh, yes, yes, then, then I would love to keep it interactive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please go ahead. So, uh, the previous statement, I'm sure you're gonna explain it more, but is this only for linear? Because if you're doing, I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking if you're evaluating functions that are polynomial, how, how come the degree is not going to kill some of the redundant? So is this for linear? No, no. So, so what do you, what do you mean by for linear? So you mean are you ask, asking about the, if the function is linear? Yeah, the function that you're trying. No, 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 no. But, right. So, so the so the definition of uh, the associated code word, the associated code, and the computational locality uh, was uh, had nothing to do with linearity. Okay. Okay. So maybe what, maybe if later on. Yes. So actually, so I do have an example, and and I hope uh, I'll have some time to get to it. Okay. But maybe that will make it clear. Okay. Sure. But uh, just a, a, a short answer to your question is no. Linearity is not needed. It is applicable for any uh, functions, even for polynomials. Like okay. because the the goal here was to look at the nonlinear functions. Right. For linear functions, uh, any linear erasure code suffices. Okay, so uh, the utility of locality-based model. So first of all, uh, this locality-based uh, model connects coded computation to the lit literature in the area of locality of codes and, lo and their local recovery schemes. So this model uh, basically provides a way of translating local recovery schemes of codes into coded computation schemes. Uh, secondly, uh, this provides an intuitive interpretation of existing coded computation schemes. And I'll take an example uh, to show this. So let's again go with this example of multivariate polynomials as the function class. Uh, so F is this multivariate polynomials of total degree D, this function class that we looked at earlier. Uh, recall from the informal theorem that the minimum number of workers needed is going to be the computational locality of multivariate polynomials. Now, computational locality, you know, is related to the associated code. And as we saw, the associated code here is the reed muller code, right? So basically now all we have to look at is local recovery schemes for the reed muller code. So for local recovery scheme of reed muller code, so let's start with uh, considering recovery of a single code symbol. And it's, it's best uh, shown with an example. So, Let's say we want to compute f, uh, which is x cubed, and just at one point at x1. Okay, so in doing this local recovery of f at this point x1, one passes a line through x1, and let's represent it by r of y, which is shown in the second subplot, which is uh, the middle plot here at the bottom of the slide. And then now if we look at f of r of y, this is going to be a univariate polynomial of degree at most d, uh, in which case, uh, uh, you know, so in, this, in general, when the, when the degree of f is uh, at most d. So this is, a, and this is shown for this particular example on the right more, rightmost plot at the bottom of the slide. So this f of r of y uh, will be such that one of this evaluation points would be the desired output. So now, as you can see, what one could do is compute d plus s plus one evaluations of this f of r of y and interpolate with any d plus one of them. So this is the straightforward uh, local recovery scheme of reed muller codes from the literature. So now in coded computation, we would need a slight, very straightforward generalization of this, basically looking at local recovery at k points instead of one point. So the approach, uh, proceeds in 
in exactly similar way as in the previous slide. I will not go into the details, but basically now instead of d plus s plus one, we have k minus one times d plus s plus one. And using this, we can arrive at the fact that this function class, which is this function class of multivariate polynomials of degree at most d, has the computational locality as shown here, which is the min between these two entities, uh, which is precisely the same uh, expression that we had seen earlier uh, in the talk. So using local recovery schemes for reed muller code, so we can arrive at the coded computation scheme of for multivariate polynomials. And this uh, reproduces the Lagrange coded computation scheme uh, by U et al. And uh, at least we think that this provides an intuitive interpretation uh, via the lens of locality of reed muller codes as to why the scheme works. Okay. And uh, so far, though, the problem of the overhead of the required number of workers still remains, right? Uh, and as we saw, so this required number of workers is related to, and it's exactly the same as the lower bound that we saw earlier. So in order to make the number of the overhead lesser, so we will have to change the setup in some way, right? So this locality-based approach provides a principled approach for doing this, that is, you know, what to change in the setup. And the key intuition here is the following. The existing schemes are based on computational locality that is induced by the function. For example, we saw uh, how the computational locality induced by this function class of multivariate polynomials can be used. Right? But however, now, given this general understanding of uh, how computational locality helps for coded computation, we can leverage computational locality induced by other aspects. For example, locality induced by inputs, locality induced by outputs, and so on. So I'll not have the time to go into the details of this, but just to take one example. Uh, so what I mean by taking, leveraging locality induced by inputs is the linear dependencies among the inputs. So linear dependencies among inputs arise naturally in many scenarios, and I, I will get to this in a minute. But in this scenario, let's say when there are d points that are linearly dependent, then coded computation via the locality-based approach reduces the number of workers needed by a factor of d minus one over d. And this factor can be substantial when there are sparse linear dependencies. For example, when d equal to three, this is, uh, reduces the number of workers needed by a factor two over three. Now you might be thinking that, wait a minute, this however requires some computational cost in identifying the linear dependencies among the inputs, right? So one of the key observations is that, actually, while it, it is true that you need computational cost to identify linear dependencies. In several applications, this can be obtained with negligible additional cost. For example, in many applications, linear dependencies among the inputs are known in advance. For example, uh, if one is performing machine learning training with uh, what is called as, as a mix-up, which adds linear combinations of the data points uh, as a way of data augmentation into the data points. So, this linear dependencies is known in advance. Uh, and similarly, in another class of applications, one could reuse these linear dependencies with a one-time amortized cost. Uh, for example, if the computations are such that there are multiple rounds of computations on same data points, uh, one example could be ML training with the gradient descent, or Linear dependencies for publicly available data sets can also be reused uh, by computing them just once. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, coded computation is a promising approach for adding resilience to distributed computation against unavailability. Uh, however, a key challenge is handling nonlinear functions. Uh, so I presented a new approach to model coded computation via lens of locality of codes defined this notion of computational locality and explained how one can design coded computation schemes using local recovery algorithms for codes. 
the, they lead to an alternative, uh, an intuitive explanation of existing coded computation schemes, and also allows one to design coded computation schemes with lower required number of workers than the current state of the art. Uh, thank you all for your attention, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Yeah, thanks a lot, Rashmi. So I think we have time for one very quick question before we conclude uh, the, this session. I think we ask you lots of questions. <laughs> True, yeah. Okay. So I think uh, this concludes uh, our session. I'm really happy for and thankful for all the speakers that joined us and gave five great talks.